Hello, my name is Angela Ogantala. I'm a designer and I work at the intersection of technology and future studies. Currently, I run an innovation lab in Copenhagen where we research and develop products and scenarios around emerging technologies. For instance, on the left is one of the products we work with around brain sensing and meditation. It's called the Muse Headband, and it's essentially it understands your brain activity or EEG signals, and then it provides you feedback so you can learn to directly have an effect on how your brain works and subsequently, of course, how your body works. And to the right is a research project two years in the making, working with the visually impaired community in Denmark and in the US on new ways to understand space and to navigate cities. It's a project that involved research with haptics and tactility to indoor navigation, to rethinking and redesigning everyday assistive devices, for instance, around mobility. However, I am here today because of my interest and my work in designing for cities, and specifically for people that live in the city and their emotions and behaviors and thought patterns and three cities have been milestones in this work, the first of which is the city of Copenhagen, which while at CIID, we collaborated with on rethinking cultural epicenters of Copenhagen, considering what happens when more and more of these spaces um, become digital, more spaces of interaction and more spaces of, of learning and of sharing. So to do so, we started with the library system and throughout the library and throughout the city, we conducted over 20 different experiments using speculative design and ethnographic methods and experience interventions to prototype the situations we were interested in testing and the real world services and to get direct feedback from the people that would actually use these services. So this work in Copenhagen led me to Austin, Texas, where I've been collaborating with Virginia Cumberbatch, who is at the University of Texas's Division of Diversity and Community Engagement. It's a mouthful. Uh, we've been working on strategies for how to address Austin, Texas's huge divide amongst the population. And it's usually a divide that is characterized by race, and it's also a divide that often ignores to a large extent uh, a large portion of its history. So here we've been focusing on how to approach Austin's continued gentrification and huge economic boom in a way that's inclusive to all its residents. Which brings me to Panama City where earlier on this year I began developing a documentary on a lively part of the city called Casco Viejo. It's a part that's experiencing a huge transformation essentially from a gang and crime riddled area with buildings completely in ruins to a new hotspot destination with an influx of new citizens. And here we've been talking to entrepreneurs and the food community and artists and even ex-gang members who now own galleries there, which there's actually more than five of them, which is an interesting occurrence. And we've been speaking to them about Casco Viejo's history and its impact on its future. So the work in these cities has led me to a collaborative project titled Services for Alternative Futures. It's a project with two other designers, uh, a guy named Luke Sturgeon from the Royal College of Art and someone named Sarah Salsina from the BBC. And this project is an educational framework for designing services for cities, both for the near and distant future services that can address governance and services that are cognizant of socio-cultural behaviors which could be tied to prejudice, identity, uh, rituals, ideologies, and services that weigh the impact of our histories on how we navigate space. And the overall aim of this project is to provide a wide spectrum of decision makers tools to understand cultural and technological considerations of building such services and how to do so collaboratively with all the voices and interests involved. So that's it, thank you. Hello, I'm Tamer. Um, I'm a creative technologist from Istanbul and currently based in Vienna. Um, 
creative technology is the somehow the best term that I feel of using for the kind of things I do. Um, I had my backgrounds in electronics engineering from Sabancı University in Istanbul, and then I decided to pursue a different path and went to Milan to Domus Academy for a master's in interaction design. And in 2012, I came to Linz to start working in our sector in Future Lab as a creative engineer and a designer researcher. And um, a, almost one year ago, I moved to Vienna to start pursuing my own directions and set up my own somehow studio and stuff. And um, the main reason was that during the last couple of years, somehow two directions emerged as the kind of things that I'm interested in doing. And I will briefly introduce them. The first one is Playful City. And it's somehow a vision of imagining the future where cities are more playful, there are more um, urban playgrounds, not for kids, but also for adults, and spaces or tools or systems for not just playing a game in a simple or gamification kind of way, but more for creative expression and um, collaboration together and forming also new communities. And um, the, this vision somehow emerged during my time in the Future Lab where we did city events like Langvolke or several projects like, of course, connecting cities and public installations and even products and also artworks where I worked on engineering, concept, and various things for um, producing this kind of work. And um, this somehow is now one of the things that I'm working in, making playful interactions and interruptions in the daily routine city life. But somehow the second vision is somehow more deeper connected with me. Um, it's about trying to understand our thousands of years long rituals, symbolic associations, and things that we believe in. And I, I'm interested in a way that technology is somehow very rational, but um, how can we also play with the ideas of believing in something, like making a wish, or um, having some rituals, like, um, uh, or some symbolic associations when we design things with technology. And um, some of the works I do in this way is um, some variables or even textile projects that deal with the topic of wish making or associations of using heartbeats in technological products or any kind of magical things that technology can bring as an experience. And um, one of the projects I'd like to also introduce is Flame that we were receiving under the Connecting Cities project. And it will be debuted tomorrow. And here I would like to invite also all of you to our artwork tomorrow in our sector in the main facade at 10 o'clock. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Agnes Yoon from Seoul, Korea. Of course, I'm thrilled to be here with you, to be participating in this unique event. Um, very short presentation, but very boring because I'm not uh, here to present my art project. Uh, I got my uh, master and PhD degree in the um, sociology of communication from University of uh, Paris Descartes, Sorbonne. Um, where um, my uh, main research theme was uh, the user uh, identity in a connected world. So how um, the way of defining who we are is in transformation in a connected world. Um, came back to Seoul, Korea. I worked as a researcher and creator uh, for internet industry. Um, developing, among others, social networking services on the web and smart um, phone applications, etc. And now I'm running um, Organic Media Lab with my colleague <laughs> who presented previously. Um, Organic Media Lab is, in, is a laboratory specializing 
in um, research and education for the future of media evolution and network business. Um, well, we see all the media and entities as a network. So, for example, Ars Electronica is itself a network which is embodied by our, uh, all of us, uh, these participants. And this connection going on here is a part of its evolution. So, um, we can say Ars Electronica uh, is defined by the relationships we are having here each other. So that's the framework of uh, organic media. Um, why I'm here <laughs> to say this, I, my special thank goes to um, Derek, uh, Professor Derek Dukakov, um, who invited me here. So thank you. And um, I'm looking forward to connecting individually with all of everyone here and um, sharing our experiences and, and our infinite um, um, possibility which this connection will bring to us. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much, Agnes. No, I know I've, I, you've heard me before, and, but I'm, I am a member of this, this research group. Um, and I had an idea, I'll just give you one example about how we do it. Uh, we have five, six members per, gr per group, and each member has a specific role. And there's a role of researcher, producer, presenter, um, uh, coordinator, but there's a very important role which is called mover, and the mover is the person who leaves his or her original group to go to another group and present questions to the other group and bring answers back, but vice versa. So I usually do this internally, and we have three groups, so I would have said, okay, mover goes to No, having heard the wonderful presentation by the other three groups that we are not normally concerned with because we are not part of the atelier, there's enough part of the atelier, my feeling is it would be very nice if we could just make sure that we have a mover that will go to the other atelier with an invitation of the other atelier to come to us so that we actually two independent group of thinking about approximately the same area of concerns and find how the style of one can actually feed into the style of the other. That's all I had to say. Thank you very much.